And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much, and lightness of heart, even as the sun that is on the seashore. God gave Solomon wisdom. The Bible says, the wisdom that was promised him and that was given to him, none had it before him, and none will, none will have it after him. How then did Satan deceive this great man? The wisest man on earth. How did Satan deceive him? Let's turn to the book of, let's go to uh, 11, 1 Kings 11, and we'll read 1 to 4. 1 Kings 11, 1 to 4. Now see the way Solomon fell. But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of Mo Mo uh, Mobite, uh, the Mobites, the Ammonites, Edomites, Zionians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which God said unto, uh, God said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon cleave unto this in love. And, it's, and he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his God, as was the heart of David his father. Amen. Solomon, the wisest man on earth. Of course, at one time, he was with God. He was walking in the way of God. He was actually treading the path of righteousness. Of course, that was the reason why he was given, the, he was, uh, he was given the wisdom that surpasses all understanding. So how did Solomon sin? There are three parts of this sin, each one worse than the other. First, despite the revelation of God's plan for marriage is for between one man and one woman. Solomon married many wives. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, it says, because of this shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. It didn't say his wives. He would click to one woman. Solomon knew this. He knew it. But he decided to go against it by marrying 700 wives and 300 women. Isn't that man strong? A man with, with one wife had not been able to even take control, I mean, satisfy that one woman. Look at a man with 1,000 women. 1,000. Uh -uh. Now, wait. 365 days is in one year. So what we are talking about is that it will take three years. How can he even do it for three years? No, no it's not possible. That is the lie of the devil unto, unto, unto Solomon. He was deceived and his heart went after strange women, which the Lord have commanded him, commanded Israel not to do. You see, he disregarded God's restriction on whom to marry. God has said concerning Israelites, do not marry into the families of this and that and that. But he disregarded it. The same women that the Israelites were, were told not to go into, he went into them and took them as wives. And even as the Lord God has said, finally, number three, he became an idolater. The lie of the devil. So how, how, I mean, how did the wisest man on earth, fell to the hand of the devil. How did he fall? Definitely, the enemy will go to him. <coughs> Excuse me. And he will say, you are the, you are the wisest man. You, you, you are very wise. And why would God will tell you not to marry you just one? Why will he tell you to just marry one wife? I mean, you, are, you know how you can do it. It's cool, but you know how to go about it. He will paint the whole thing in such a form that man will fall. Solomon fell. The wisest man on earth fell. He that thinketh he standeth, let him beware, lest he fall. Solomon believed so much in himself 
believed so much in his wisdom. We saw the exploit he did with his wisdom. We saw how people from all over the world came in order to see, to hear him speak of his wisdom. But he fell. He fell. What about his father, David? We all know about David. God called him a man after his own heart. He was absolutely the greatest king in Israel. But David fell also. Second Samuel chapter 11. In Second Samuel chapter 11 verses 1 to 4. You see, the case of David is something that rubbed up on Solomon. Because as we know, David himself took so many wives, just as his son. I charge you as a man, what legacy are you leaving for your children? Whatever you do, your child will do. Because they are watching you. If you have a child, your child sees you and does not see God. Your child knows there is God. But because he sees you, he sees God in you. So whatever, no matter whatever he thinks about you, is what he thinks of God. Take heed, lest you fall. If you lead your child astray, if you become things that you are not supposed to become, your child is seeing you. Take it or leave it. One of them would, do, would take the same full step that day. Check history and check even those that are very close to us. Look at, let's look at them. Let's look at their lives. Let's look at the family. Whatever they are doing, you will find that truth in one of their children. One of our pastors, once, when he was minister, once said to us one day that he never knew that his daughter was watching him. Anytime he sneezed, he would sneeze with such vigor that as if everyone would hey, and he would throw his hands everywhere. He didn't know his daughter was watching him until one day his daughter was standing. There were friends, family around. And he goes, hey, I said, man, look, I said, well, who taught you to do that? He was she was watching the man. She was watching, he was watching her father. I remember one of my, 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 first, my first daughter back home. When we were in Nigeria, I always like to listen to the news by 9 o'clock. So, and we have, in a, we have a passage where there's a sink where I always go to wash my mouth. But when the news starts, I will not stand by the door. I'll place my hand there and I'll be brushing my teeth. I'll be watching the news. Until one day, my daughter just came. She took her this and then she stood by there. She started brushing her teeth. I was looking at them. My wife said, did you see what you are doing? That's what that girl is doing. This happens. I need you to look inwards. Check your children. Whatever you do, they will do it. Amen. Let's look at David. In the book of 2 Samuel 11 verses 1 to 4. 2 Samuel 11 1 to 4. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servant with him. And all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabban. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an eventide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she returned unto her house. Amen. At a time when kings were going to battle, David was fighting his own battle on top of the roof. At a time when men of war were at war, David was lost in after another man's wife. He pondered within himself, 
having sexual relationship with that woman, he pondered within himself, he, he imagined it, he examined it, he thought how exciting it will be. I know what Satan will have told him. He has told the same to so many men. Just this one time. Just this one time. Just, I mean, nobody will see you after all. You are the king. You can see. It. I mean, see how can this kind of beautiful thing standing over there just pass you by? Just this one time. Just try it and do. I'm sure this is what Satan would have told him. He said, surely, one time it won't matter. What is it? At least, that's what, I mean, that's what goes in the mind of a fornicator. I mean, how can you, I mean, how can you explain the situation of a man who has a housemaid and he goes in into his housemaid, knowing fully well that if his wife finds out, it's Wahala. What Satan will tell him? After all, nobody's at home. Nobody will see you. I just just want that. Just do what you are going to do and let's forget about it. And then what happens? The man goes in. I was a friend of ours in Nigeria. He had, a maid, he had a maid servant. We don't know that this man was already doing extra time with his, uh, with his maid. Until one day his wife caught him. You know. <laughs> I don't know. The, the maid was supposed to babysit the children. But he was babysitting this man. Because when the wife would, ca would catch him, he was having his hand wrapped around the, 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 the maid from behind. Or not. <laughs> How can you explain that? Would he not have considered it in his mind? Would he not have looked at the pros and cons? Would he not have thought about it if somebody just walks in? Would he not have thought about it? He sure would have. But Satan would tell him, don't worry, everyone is out. Everyone has gone, but just unknown to him, the wife did not, leave, did not go with her bag to the office. That was the only thing. And she came back. So it was not the first time. It was not the first time. And I'm sure probably not the second time. But Satan succeeded in letting him know. That look, why don't you do just. What about, the, what, what, what about men of God? In recent time we have had stories. On television and here and there. Would you tell me that a man of God does not know. A man that mounts the pulpit and preach against fornication. Would he not know that fornication is not right? He knows. How are the mighty fallen and a weapon of war destroyed? He that thinketh his stand, let him beware, lest he falls. David fell. Satan will have told him. I mean, what I mean, what does it matter anyway? Nobody will find out. Uriah, I mean, you, you can imagine he was already told. Somebody told him that this is the wife of Uriah. One of his men that he knew so much. This is one of the this is the wife. Yet, Satan succeeded in making him fall and he lay with the woman. He will tell him no one will ever know. No one will find out. You can just do this and let's go with it. You can't resist the temptation. So why don't you try? I mean, standing on the roof and looking at the woman. I mean, this temptation is too high. So you don't, wor don't worry about it. Just do it. But the Bible says, flee from every appearances of the devil. Every appearance of fornication. Look at Joseph in the book of Genesis chapter 39 verses 7 to 12. When Joseph was in this same situation, he ran away. He did not wait for a minute. He ran away. That is what the Bible says. Flee. David could afford to go back into his room. I haven't seen what he saw. He could afford to go back into his room. He could afford to go even assuming that he had been aroused at that time. He could afford to go to one of his wives. But because the enemy wanted him to fall, he fell. In 1 Corinthians 6 and 18, the Bible says, flee fornication. Flee. That's what it says. It didn't say romance with fornication. It didn't say cajole fornication. Flee from, from fornication. Because every sin that a man doeth, he doeth against his body. But that, whoever committed fornication is sinning against his own body. He's sinning against his soul. It's because the temple of God dwells in the body. 
Amen.